This Weekend Post, another live edit, unscripted, uncut, start to finish. Hey everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to InPost. Today, going to do another live edit, sharing one of the photos I took from the outing I shared earlier this week. And if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and take a take a peek over there. I've got the link in the show notes, and there should be, if you're watching on YouTube, a little pop-up that'll show you exactly where that is. So uh, without further ado, we're going to dive right in here. I've got this photo here. I'm going to work on this one with these three rocks and uh, take this uh, start to finish. I'm going to begin in Lightroom. And so very first thing we will do is lens corrections. Make sure those are turned on. That nice, nice, it brighten things up. I'm taking a peek at my histogram here. Certainly need to stretch things out a little bit. I don't have a pure white in this scene. I might not actually have pure white. There's really not a, um, a white in the photo. It's a lot of gray, a bit of, you know, oranges and so forth. So let's just get into the basic panel and see about shifting our exposure a little bit to the right. And so I'm kind of, I'm watching the histogram actually as I'm doing that, just trying to get the peak here about center because most of this photo is gray and the sand is like, you know, that grayish, you know, slightly orangish tone. And from here, um, let's see what happens if we do the traditional black and white adjustment. So I'm going to get my white point all the way up there. I'm going to get the black point down there. And, you know, this looks really washed out. I just, I just don't like that. So um, I'm going to reset and look at this a little bit differently. Instead, let's take exposure up a little bit more and increase contrast. So I should see that those rocks in the center should get a little darker and these like these streams through the waves here waves uh wavy lines through the sand that's getting better um open the shadows up slightly and now let's take a look at maybe nudging whites over a little bit before after. I'll take that. I just don't think I'm going to end up stretching out the histogram the entire way to take everything in. I'm going to press the V key to switch into black and white and do a little more uh, work in contrast and clarity because that's um, that's something I'm just able to see better in black and white. And while I'm in black and white, let's take a look at the tone curve. We we'll use that to do a little bit of a little bit of adjustments on contrast work. Okay, so this is um, coming together. It's, it's obvious that our subject is here. This is what's in focus, and really this rock here. Uh, if you watched in the field, I was shooting at f1.8, and you can see even this rock is soft. There's a distance of a couple of inches there. That really makes uh, a big deal when you're looking at the focus plane. Let's pop the, the clarity up a little bit more there. All right. Okay, um, now color-wise, there's really not a lot of color going on here. So this will not be a strong color image, but I am thinking about a split tone and just adding a, a kind of a taste of color to it. So let's get split toning open. And I have some presets that I use for split toning. Let's get that going here. And I'm just kind of hovering over these and looking at the navigator up here. And these, most of these are warmer tones. And as I cycled through that, I kind of liked the, um, where was it? Might have been this one here, the cocoa and cream. Let's hit that. A little bit strong. So let's back some of that off. Back off the saturation now. And certainly in the shadows. That's where I've got a lot of, I got a lot of heavy handedness going on with that particular saturation setting. So that's before the split tone and that's after. I kind of like that. I'm going to, I'm going to keep that. It's, in, it's, it's warm. It's inviting. Uh, I do want to, do something with this center rock here. Add uh, maybe some more detail. So let's grab a brush, a little bit of contrast. It looks like I've got this pretty well loaded from whatever I was doing previously. Uh, let's start with that. Shrink down the brush size. I can shrink the feather a little bit. And I'm using the shift bracket to shrink the feather. Let's turn off that little blue circle for now so you can see what the feather looks like. And I'm just brushing around on the rock. I'm not using the auto mask or anything, pretty healthy amount of density. Let's take a look at what we're grabbing there. And one more little sweep in there like that. Cool. 
And uh, the last thing I'm starting to think about here is um, is actually adding some type of glow and uh, to really everywhere except this main rock and this center part here to kind of further draw the eye in but also to give it a, a brighter and airier feeling. Now I'm going to see if I'm able to do this uh, straight up in Lightroom because I don't need a lot. Uh, and one way, one way to uh, get a glow look is to use the clarity slider in the reverse direction, you know, negative clarity or reducing clarity. So let's reduce some clarity, preload this radial brush here, and just drag this over the center here. So right now what I'm doing is I'm protecting the rock that we just did some, some painting on. And so now if you watch before and after, you can see that everything else is kind of getting soft out there. Um, this is kind of working and kind of not. I think I do more work. Uh, the, 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 these rocks here don't need to have that softness. So I will switch over to the brush and let's use erase. Uh, heavy flow is good. Feather doesn't have to be that high. Let's actually just go really, really large with that. I'll make the brush nice and big and kind of take away what I did with that softness on these secondary subjects here. And just wiggling around a little bit on those guys there. So now if we look at before the <laughs> glow attempt here and after, yeah, it's kind of working. It's kind of not. So I think I'm going to fire this over into Luminar. I like the glow effects and the Mac fun tools. And let's see if that's going to do anything additional for us. So I'm going to do a file plugin. Actually, not actually not for Luminar. Luminar is a little a lot. If I do file plugin extras and transfer it, I'm not going to carry over the changes I just made. So instead, I'll do a uh, let's finish off with that. I'll do a right click edit in Luminar. And that way I can maintain all the adjustments that I made. Everything else is good there. I'll see you on the other side. All right, so in Luminar, I want to add a glow. And I'm going to start with a soft glow. I guess that'd be me in the creative area. Here we go, soft glow, because that's going to uh, brighten up the brighter areas. And so you can see it's getting it's getting very bright, uh, but only in the, the spots that have the softer, brighter tones before and after. I like that more than just what I had with Lightroom. It's a subtle touch, uh, but that's okay. Um, smoothness, I'll play with that a little bit. I'm just kind of watching things. Let's not do that. Um, but I will also do a mask because I, again, as we did before, I don't want to add any more glow onto our subject rocks. So masking brush, I'm going to select the soft glow so we can see we're masking on soft glow. X key and opacity very high, like 90-ish. Let's uh, change our feather. Same type of keys we used in Lightroom. Let's take the glow away from our rocks here. This one's already soft just because of the focal plane. Like that. All right, and then I guess the last thing to do since I am here in Luminar, I'll add my uh, my vignette here as well. So feather all the way down, amount down, size down. Let's uh, let's see that edge. There's my edge roundness. We'll square that up a little bit and get the feather back up. And let's see what the amount looks like. Actually, I don't mind it kind of kind of on the darker side, and I might decrease that size now. So I'll start to add darkness onto these secondary subject rocks. And so before Luminar and then after Luminar. I like that. I'm going to go with that, call it good. We'll say apply and I'll bring it back into Lightroom. That is it. Uh, tip of the week, I guess, is that the plugins that we have for Lightroom, they still do better job with glow effects than Lightroom itself. As I said, you can kind of fake a glow with decreasing sharpness, decreasing clarity, contrast, and those types of things. Uh, but I still prefer to use some of the more specialized tools that do a little more math and it's specific around creating you know, a, a glow, mysterious, or ethereal look. 
And that does it for this weekend post. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, let me know somehow. Comments on the video below. Send me your questions. You can contact me through my website directly. I'll turn an answer around to you, usually in a couple of days, if not sooner. And I just like hearing from folks, getting your questions in. You make me think about my photography. Hopefully my answers are helping you. We get better together. You've heard me say that before, right? Well, until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Happy shooting. I want to get through another photo from the shoot I shared with you earlier. The shoot I shared with you, that was a tongue twister. Pulled it off though. Shouldn't have stopped.